Stitch Kitties, I'm Brittany with Stitches of Love Quilting and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to get started and give you some tips on making your little welcome kit that you get when you join the Loads of Fun Block of the Month for sewing machine applique. So I'm going to show you how to organize your applique pieces that come in your kit. I'll give you tips on building your applique unit and then I'm going to show you how to do the foundation paper piecing flying geese that is a great practice before you get started with your real block of the month that will come to you for the next month. So let's get started reviewing what's in our box. So when you open your pattern, you'll see that you have a full color printed pattern. It starts by telling you, of course, welcome. We give you a thread tip. We're going to use 30 weight thread in our needle, 50 weight thread that matches in our bobbin, and then we'll use a 9014 universal needle size in our sewing machine. Then you have a welcome from myself and Julie. Thanks for being a member. Then we talk about fabric prep. We always lightly starch our fabric before we cut it. It just keeps it um, really nice to handle throughout the process of working with the fabric, be it for piecing something or what have you. You don't want to ever starch and iron again your applique pieces. Though. They come perfect. They're already starched for you. They're already fused with the Sulky Perfect Applique Fusible Web, and they're ready to use. So you're gonna go through your fabrics in your kit and you're gonna cut your pieces. I'll show you what you'll have. I'll switch camera views for you. So you are going to cut your applique background fabric from the Denim Stars. You're also gonna cut your app, your um, backing rectangles from the star fabric. We'll set that aside till we need it. This is your binding fabric. It's about three inches by width of fabric that we give you. You'll trim that down to two and a quarter. I'm sorry, to two and a half inches or if you wanna be um, lower, you can take that down to two and a quarter if you want. That's a personal choice for you. This cute little plaid print is called the Daisy Hayride Plaid. This is what's going to be the center of your each flying geese right here. So you cut your two inch squares. Then from your assorted fabrics, you're going to have two, two and a half inch squares, and you can put them in the order that we're going to use them. We can go on and do that real fast if you'd like. I think it just makes it easier to keep it organized. So, do, 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 do. We are gonna do these two first, then our red, then this fun floral print, then this plaid, then the green and the blue. So now I'm just gonna set these aside. Now, let's talk about what our next steps are. Then we're going to go into our pattern. We're going to start with our sewing machine applique instructions. So I'll show you in just one moment how we're going to organize our pieces and make this unit. And from there, we'll go into making our foundation paper piecing. But first, I'll give you some stitch tips. And then at the end, we have assembly instructions where you sew it all together. And then also at the back of the pattern, we gave you some stitch tips on how to pick your favorite buttonhole stitch and some tips from Julie on how she gets it just right. So let's get started on building our applique units. So first what I'm going to do, I'm going to set my pieces aside and I'm going to set up what I call, here I'll switch to this view for you, I set up what I call a perfect stack. It's what I like to use for sewing machine applique. So I have my light pad down in front of me and it comes with a cutting mat. I don't need the cutting mat right now so I'm going to set it aside. Next what I'll put directly on top of my light pad is my applique glass mat. This is awesome because it allows you to have the benefit of your light pad, but you can iron right on it with your fusing mat and so it doesn't hurt your light pad to apply the heat of the iron. And then on top we'll have our fusing mat. So up first what we want to do is take our placement guide and I'm going to show you how I've organized my pieces. So first up they come already cut out for you and let me switch to this view. All you're gonna do is take your pieces. This is your placement guide right here. All of these individual pieces, that's your reverse applique piece. So all you're gonna do is simply line up your pieces in place. You can snip them free. You just make one little snip. Let me snip my little leaves free and I'm gonna show you how I number them and then organize my piece. So I'll go in real detail here on the starter for you and then every month you'll know how to organize your applique pieces from here on out. And then just snip your two little hearts. Are those not so cute? 
And we're putting it fusible side up because what we're gonna do is label the number on the piece. And also, because this is the reverse applique, it means the fusible side is up. There we go. Snip this little guy free. So easy to get your pieces ready. Don't you love that they're already cut out for you? I know I do. Now you have two of piece number five, and that's because it is a white piece and it needs double lined. You'll notice that throughout the entire quilt. Anytime there's white, and specifically on your, um, what do you call this? On your license plate, the white is always going to be double lined. Now throughout the quilt, all the license plates have little words. On this, it just has cute little hearts. There we go. And so you can see everything's a nice little perfect fit. And I'm gonna show you a trick with the, um, what you might call it, flowers as well with an arrow. I like to draw an arrow so I don't have to, the flowers are all a little different, right? So you don't wanna to have to spin them when you get them in place. So I'll show you a little trick. I do that with flowers and sometimes I do it with like any kind of sort of directional piece that's a little hard to tell which direction it might go. So there we go. And then our cute little flowers. Is this not such fun fabric? This is all um, from Riley Blake. It's a collection or a combination of collection of Lori Holt fabrics. And on this print, see, it's kind of hard to see. Just flip it over to snip your pieces free. If you have like a crazy print like this cute red truck. It's really fun, isn't it? There we go. And then we'll snip this free. Now the scissors I'm using, you're probably noticing how great they are. These are Karen K. Buckley. This is a medium. This is my favorite size. They're serrated and they're sharp all the way to the tip. I love, love, love these scissors. Okay, so now we're ready to label. You can use a Pigma pen or a Sharpie, anything like that to label on the back. So we have piece number four, number one, number two, six and seven. I always put a line under my six and my nines because it just makes it easier. You don't wanna get those two confused. This is number five. Now five is double lined, so I'm only gonna label one because I can remember. So then this is number 11. I'm just gonna do my arrow up. And then you're gonna turn this little guy until he fits. So I put him on your placement guide, do, 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 right side up. So once you get this, see how I'm having to spin it? I feel like these three right here go right there. They do, there we go. So I'm gonna draw my arrow up because I know that's gonna be the top because when I reverse it for you, I keep it going the same direction on this piece. Not all pieces, but on pieces where I like to use the arrow method, I do that for you. So 14, 12, and then this little guy, see it's not a perfect circle. I'm gonna kind of spin him, there we go. Do my little arrow and it's number 16. Okay, so now let's organize our pieces by how we're gonna build our applique unit. So we just identified a number. We need to mark our accent lines on pieces nine and 10. So these are our little leaves. So I'm gonna turn my light pad on and you just put piece number nine in place and you can use a Pigma pen or a chalk pencil and mark your line and then on number 10. There we go. And that just gives you a guide for when you are stitching. So let me hold that up a little bit so you can see how there's an accent line stitched on. There we go. If I can flip this piece over, it's sticking to my fusing mat. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, and I almost pulled my fusible off. There we go. Okay, so now we're on set number four. We're gonna build an applique unit that uses pieces two through eight. So we are gonna grab two, where's three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I know this is the first unit I'm gonna build. So now I have it a little stack going from lowest to highest number. I flip it over and that's the order 
in which I'll iron it on and I just set it off to the side. Now for unit two, we're gonna gather piece one and then nine through 16. So we have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. So I recommend, here I'll switch cameras. I recommend doing this method because it organizes your pieces and I think that makes it an easier way and it helps you eliminate making any mistakes. So they're all numbered on the back. You have your accent lines marked and you have your cute little piles of how you're going to iron them together into applique units. So let's keep going with that. So now what we're going to do, you're gonna take your placement guide and we are gonna put it, so we have our light pad, our glass mat, our placement guide, and now our fusing mat on top. So remember our little pile for applique unit one? Well, let's pick it up and get started. So we have right here piece number two. There we go. And all of your pieces will be an absolute perfect fit. There we go. And now we have our cute little tire number three. So I haven't ironed anything just yet. So I don't have anything touching just yet. Now number four, this is our little bumper. So it's gonna overlap just like so. Now our number five. And so the reason there are two again is because it double lines it. Doo, doo, doo. And this fits right in there. You just wanna get it straight. So this doesn't overlap yet. What's gonna hold this white piece to everything is actually the license plate cover in just a moment. And then that right on top. So I am gonna give this a little tap just so it doesn't wiggle when I go to put the license plate cover on. And this is gonna tie that white to the top of the truck, or rather the back of the truck. There we go. So you have it in place and it's covering that seam. So we'll give this a press. And now we have our two little hearts. And the hearts are exactly alike, so it doesn't matter which one you put in place of six and seven. Remember though, you wanna use your placement guide because see right here, this is our seam allowance. So this part of the applique is gonna be sewn in. So you wanna make sure that you put your hearts in the appropriate place because you don't want them to disappear into your seam allowance. See, perfect. And give this a little press. Now let's build our next applique unit, which is applique unit number two. And I'm just gonna move this over easy peasy like that. Grab our pieces. So number one, there we go. Get it right in place. And what I love about the fusing mat, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a little bit tacky feeling, right? So it does kind of hold your pieces as you're putting them in place, which is very helpful. So now number nine, just like so. Piece number 10, there we go. So I am gonna give, oh look, I didn't have that in place. There we go. Let's give this a little bit of a press where they overlap. Now we're gonna do our three flowers. My ironing cord is stuck. There we go. Well, it just doesn't wanna behave, my iron. Y'all can't see it, but my iron is misbehaving. My cord is stuck on something else. So here is number 11. And then we put the flower center right on top of it. There we go. And you'll see there's a little nook. They fit together just so. Then we jump over here to the left and this flower looks really funny, right? That's because this whole little bit gets caught in the seam allowance. So we just had it go all the way out for you. And then again, this has a little nook that's gonna line up on your, whoop, on your flower. 
There we go. So you can see that little jut lines up perfectly. Let's give these a press where they overlap. Let's fix my cord off camera because it's driving me nuts, you guys. There we go. Now I'm better. I know y'all couldn't see it, but I was having a situation. Now here's where I'm really going to use the arrow, right? I have my arrow up. I'm going to immediately just flip that over and then I don't have to worry about spinning this little guy because he's going to be a perfect fit just right there. And now same thing for number 16, flip it where my arrow is still up and place this right in the center. And now give those a press together. So now we have our two units ready to go. You could go on and connect them right now on your fusing mat if you want, or you can connect them on your background fabric. That's what I'm gonna do. And you just very gently lift one unit off, set it to the side, and then we lift our unit one, put it to the side so we don't need our fusing mat anymore. Set that also to the side. So now you need your background fabric. And I did not press mine ahead of time like I should. Forgive me for that. Just gonna give it a... You should remember part of your fabric prep is to prepare your fabric. So yours is already prepared. There we go. We're just gonna take this right on top and look at what a giant piece of fabric we have. You're gonna trim this down ultimately to this, but it's nice just to have extra fabric to work with when you're doing your applique. So now we're simply going to take unit one, put it right in place, and then unit two, put it right in place. There we go. I push that up just a little. There we go. And now we're ready to iron this to our background fabric. And then I'll tell you how we're gonna stitch it. I'm not gonna stitch it in the camera because, well, you know how to stitch. I'm just gonna give you some stitch tips. So I can turn my light off. So now I have it on my steady buddy. I can do one final little press onto the fabric. There we go. So cute. And remember, we have our little accent lines drawn. So when we do that, stitching with the avocado, we know that's there. So to stitch, we recommend that Sulky Tear Easy Stabilizer. You'll want to have that underneath. And you don't need to have a giant piece. You could cut this little piece down to just fit behind your applique because when you're done, you're gonna remove it all. You tear all of it out. So let's talk about our stitching that we're gonna do. You have a nice chart that tells you what color you're doing where. So you're gonna do 1039 red on your truck and your hearts. 1005 black goes around the tire and the license plate. 1218 is your silver gray, goes around your bumper. The 1177 is your avocado, which is going to be your two leaves and the accent line. Now, when you do your accent line, you can go to a thicker straight line stitch, or you can just go back and forth over that line once or twice. It's up to you. Then 0567 is butterfly gold. You can see on this, instead of doing a buttonhole stitch around all the curves, Julie did a straight stitch, a little like about an eighth of an inch in all the way around. So that's also an option for you when you're doing your applique. And then finally, 1130 is the brown, the buttonhole stitch around all three flowers. So that's all you have to do to do your sewing machine applique. It's really quick and easy. And the reason for this little starter kit is it's nice practice for you, right? You get used to how we write our patterns, you get used to the little color tables, and you can practice your stitching if maybe it's been a minute since you've done sewing machine applique. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is make our flying geese. And I'm just gonna keep this all in one video and keep going. So hopefully you're gonna stay sewing with me for that part. So now what we're gonna do is go to our foundation paper piecing instructions. And what I like to have set up in front of me, I'm simply going to move that out of the way. I like to use my light pad a little bit when I'm doing the foundation paper piecing. So I like to have my little spinny rotary mat. Now for the small flying geese in your starter, I would recommend using your add an eighth ruler. That means your seam allowance between each of the um, pieces on your foundation paper piecing flying geese strip is going to have an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you don't have the eight and add an eighth, you can use your add a quarter. It doesn't matter on something this small like your little pin cushion if you have a little bit of bulk behind that. 
In fact, on the embroidery machine version, I actually have everybody do a quarter inch seam allowance just because working with an eight inch seam allowance in embroidery, I didn't like it. I like the quarter inch better. So you do the quarter inch throughout the entire quilt when you're making your flying east border blocks every month. So again, I'm gonna use the eighth of an inch on the small one, but you're welcome to use the quarter inch like we're gonna use throughout the quilt. And then I have my two cute little piles of fabrics, right? I have all my centers and I have my pieces in order of how I'm gonna use them. I have my seam roller. This is really handy for um, each little step. Basically, this functions as like a little iron for you and it keeps your um, piecing really nice all the way up. And then of course you need to have a rotary cutter to trim with. And to get started, and maybe if you like to use it throughout, we have a Soline glue pin, which really helps get started. So what we do first, dun 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 dun. <laughs> Almost lost my piece of paper. So we have a piece of paper that feels like newspaper print. This is foundation paper piecing paper. It's um, really nice to sew through and it's really nice to tear away at the end because you will remove all of the paper. Now, if you look closely at what this says, it says, wanna practice? So there's three on here printed. You only need one for your real thing. And we only give you fabric to make one for your real thing. So you have two that you can grab fabric from your stash and cut it to the two and a half and the two inch squares like it says in the pattern, and you can do two practices. If you wanna practice before you use your real fabric, that's totally a good idea, I think. So, if you haven't done foundation paper piecing in a while. So what I'm gonna do, here I'll switch to this camera, you can see that we give you cut lines between. You don't want to cut on the actual line, your trim line, until you're actually trimming. So right now, I'm just like loosely cutting these out. And then we'll just free them across the bottom, like so. And then set this aside. And then I'll just free one because I only need one technically right now, but those are your practice. And then if you wanna trim it up just a little on the side so you're not working with such a big piece, you can. Okay, so to get started, the first thing we're gonna do is take our little do, 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 do. This little Daisy Hayride plaid. We're gonna take our light pad and turn it on. Let me move my pattern out of the way. Get my little guy out of the way. I like to have kind of a clean workspace. So what we're gonna do, we're always gonna work from the top of our paper. We're always gonna sew on the top. So we're gonna sew on the lines between the pieces. We're gonna sew this line between one and two. This line between one and three. Then we'll do this horizontal line then we'll do between four and five, four and six, horizontal line, and then so on and so forth. So you're always going to be working and sewing from the top, but your fabric is gonna be on the back. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our glue pen, give yourself a little dot of blue, uh, uh, excuse me, of glue within that triangle. So see where our triangle is? We did a little square. Just take your little plaid, and put it right in there. So you just wanna make sure this plaid piece is way bigger than you need. You wanna make sure that it's extending past your trim line on the bottom, the left, and the right, and you want it at least an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch past the top of this line right here. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is take our first piece of fabric for the left part of our flying geese, which in this case is a super cute plaid, and we're gonna put this now on the back. So we have this, wrong sides together, right? So you should see your yellow plaid on the back. Now we're gonna take this piece of fabric and we're gonna line up where it is about a quarter of an inch past this line right here. And I want it to be about a quarter of an inch past this on the top. So you can see we have given you a giant piece a fabric to work with because it's just easier to work with a giant piece of fabric. So now let's go over to our sewing machine and let's sew a seam. So let me roll over here. Now with your sewing machine, you wanna take your stitch down to really small. I took mine down to 1.5 and I also like to go slow and I like to set my machine up where it's gonna go forward, backward, forward, and then at the end, I hit the reverse button to go backwards and forward again. So you wanna use a really small stitch, like a 1.5, and you wanna make sure that you go over 
um, the stitches at the beginning and end. So that way when you're ripping all of your paper off at the end, your stitches stay really nice and secure. So I'm just gonna take the point of my needle to the point right there, put my foot down. So now you can see I'm in that point and I'm sewing on the line between one and two. So there you go, right on the line. You can see my machine is now gonna go backwards and then we're just gonna go forward. Do, 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 do. I need like fun sewing hold music, don't I? Okay, and now I'm gonna push the reverse button. It's gonna go backwards and forward. So now we're gonna check ourselves. Cut your thread and let's come back over here. Do, do, do. This camera. <laughs> And what we want to do, so we have this up, right? Let's trim our thread. I like to trim my threads as I go. It keeps it tidy. So remember, these are right sides together inside. But what we're going to do is flip this out. And when we do, we want to have fabric extending past this part of the rectangle and across the top. And look at that. We have tons of extra fabric. So that means it's safe for me to trim. So I'm going to flip it back, right? So my fabric is flipped back. I'm just gonna fold this on that sewing line, take my add a quarter ruler, I'm sorry, add an eighth ruler, I apologize, so many titles in my head, and we're gonna trim this away, and then, now with the back side up, flip this over, do a little finger press, and then take your roller, and roll right over it. So while you're building this, you're gonna be like, um, Brittany, this looks crazy. Yeah, we gave you way more fabric than you need, but we want you to be successful. And there's nothing worse than doing foundation paper piecing and having not enough fabric. Oh my gosh. So now we're doing the exact same color, right? Cause we're doing the next, we're doing piece number three. So this line is the line we're gonna sew on, the line between one and three. So I'm just gonna line it up where I have some above, I have some below and I'm definitely extended past, like about a quarter inch past, if you pretended to draw a line past the line you're gonna sew on, you want fabric past that. So now we're ready to sew. And again, right sides together, right? Our fabric is right sides together. Oh, not that camera view. Whoops, my other camera went out. Oh no, why is it out? I'm not sure. Okay, well, I'll just keep talking to you from here. Let's see if you can see me while I sew. And if I can get this camera to come back, then I'll show you my sewing again. Did it come back? Hello, camera. Oh no. Mm, I don't know. Well, we're gonna talk from here while I sew. So I'm gonna sew on the line between one and three. So I'm gonna put my needle down in the point at the top Put my foot down and then I'm just going to sew down that line and I'll show you my line in just one moment. So can you see me? I'll try and say hi while I sew. We'll see if I can steer and talk. That would be quite the feat, wouldn't it? And then I stop right at the end. Push your backwards button so it's going to go backwards on your stitch and then forward to lock that in and then you cut your thread. So now lift your foot and come back over here. There we go. Okay, my camera came back. So I'll be able to show you my sewing again in a second. So I'm gonna trim my thread. And now this is what it looks like. You have all this extra over here, but we wanna flip this over and you wanna make sure that when you flip that over, it's extending past this horizontal line, past your side and the bottom. So we have, again, tons of extra fabric. So what you do now, flip that back over so everything is right sides together. You are going to now flip back on that line, take your ruler, and you can feel this little lip that's right here, it just catches that seam. It's so easy. And put that in place and do a trim. There we go. So now put this where you see the back. And just like we did with the other piece, we're gonna push it back with our fingers and then we're gonna roll it. There we go, do, 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 roll it. Now let's flip it back over because remember we worked from the top 
Now it's time to do piece number four. So we're back to doing the top. We want to put right sides together and we want to be about a quarter inch past this horizontal line between two, three, four, and one. See that horizontal line? We want to be above that by about a quarter inch. So just line this up. And then you can also feel it. I like to have a light pad because see, I can see where my square is. I'm way past up here. And actually I'm gonna come a little bit because I don't need that much past. There we go. And you just wanna make sure that your rectangle is pretty straight, right? It looks straight at the bottom, par like parallel to that. That means when I flip it up, it's gonna be pretty straight. So now we are gonna sew on this straight line across. So this is what it looks like on the back. You have right sides together. Now let's go back over right here. Glad the camera came back to me. I was having a small panic, y'all, because I really want you to be able to see the stitching. So you can see I put my needle where I know I'm in the right spot and then just hit start. Again, it's going to go forward, backward, and now forward again. I'll speed up just as you get more and more comfortable doing this, you can speed your machine up more and more. And just stay on that line. And now reverse. There we go. And cut your thread. Lift your foot. Let's come back over here and check ourselves. So we are going to pull this up. And what we want to do is make sure that it's well extended past our seam allowance after number four. So see the point of number four, we wanna make sure it's going past that. And it is. So what we're gonna do then is flip it back down and we're ready to trim. So our pieces are together, right sides together, flip down. We're gonna bend our paper back where that seam is. And now we have a ton to trim off. Don't let that panic you. Cause we are working with pieces way bigger than we need. And we're going to set that aside, our little trash. Now, flop that back up and let's flip it over. There we go. Now we have the center of our next block. And look at our point. Beautiful. And we're just going to roll, roll, roll. There we go. That is a beautiful, beautiful point. Now, what I like to do, and I don't know if everybody likes to do this, but something I like to do for my little center, I'm just going to give myself a little dab in the center of that number four triangle. And that just holds it there because it's flopping up and I like things to be tidy. So you don't have to do that, but I like to. So our next print that we're working with is our cute little red daisy. And the same thing, what we're gonna sew now is between four and five, right? And so we're gonna start up here at the point and go all the way down. So what we wanna do is angle our little piece on our fabric we want to make sure we have about a quarter inch past that top point and then we have about a quarter inch all the way down and we want to extend past this little point. See, I have fabric coming past that point. So I'm going to come in just a little. There we go. So again, past the top by about a quarter inch. I'm extended past the sew line by about a quarter inch all the way. And then I know I'm coming down past my point down here. So let's sew. Just to show you, again, what it looks like on the back, you're gonna have your pieces right sides together. So let's go back to our sewing machine. Now remember, this line starts all the way down here, right? Kind of in block two, actually. So just go to your point, put your foot down, and boom, we sew. This is so easy. We're gonna complete this process over and over and over the same way. So once you know this, you know how to do it for any foundation paper piecing project. You're always just sewing between the lines. It's really quite easy. Now, but you're sewing on the line between the squares. Sorry, I didn't wanna confuse that. Okay, now let's check ourselves before we trim anything. So we come over here. We are going to flip this open and take a look. We are past up here. We're past everything in number five. See? So we're good. So we're gonna flip it back together. And then we're gonna fold. Well, first off, let's trim our strings, right? There we go, keep it tidy. 
and then flip back on that sewn line. And we are gonna take our ruler and see my little rotating mat, I find it handy. And then we are going to trim. And then when we flip this back over, beautiful. And now we're gonna flip it this way. There we go. So give it a press. Now we're gonna do the other side. So now we're gonna sew on the line between four and six, right? Because we're just going in numerical order. So we want our little fabric and we want to go about a quarter inch pass on the top and a quarter inch pass on the side. I'm way more than a quarter inch, but that's fine. We have it extended past the bottom, extended past the top. So we're ready to sew on this line all the way down here, right? So it's between four and six and then technically into three. So again, right sides together. So back to the camera. And doo -doo -doo, my little, oh, sorry guys, I hit the camera. Yikes. Can you tell I'm not a videographer? I can sew. <laughs> Thank goodness, right? Okay, so now your sewing machine is going to go forward, backwards, and forward again. And we're sewing right along this line. Doo -doo 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 -doo, all the way to the bottom. Do one more stitch. If you go past, the outer trim line with the thread, it's okay. No one will know. It's all right. And then trim it. And now let's check ourselves before we trim. So come back over here. We're gonna flip this out and check. And sure enough, we're totally past that number six all the way. So that means it's safe to put our fabric, flip it back together, go over to our cutting mat and fold this down. Do -do -do -do. There we go. And you are gonna fold all the way down. So you're gonna tear that line just a little bit because you do wanna make sure you have a nice eighth of an inch seam line all the way down. There we go. And trim, fold this back up and now flip it over and we're gonna fold this out. So now I think you have the hang of it, right? You're gonna do this over and over and over all the way up. So the next step that you would do would be to take your daisy and you're gonna go a quarter inch past this line. And you're gonna repeat this all the way up until you have a perfect piece. Then what you're gonna do is trim it. So I am going to off camera finish sewing my thing and I'll show you what it looks like once we're ready to trim, okay? So now you can see what everything looks like. And look, I ripped my paper, it's okay. Don't worry about it. If you rip your paper, just keep it together. It'll be all right. So I'm gonna do a little bit of trimming in my threads. I tried to do it as I went, but I forgot a few. So keep your little workspace tidy. Everything is flipped out. So on the back, you can see it looks really funny, right? You have all these weird little coming out. Doesn't really look like much of anything yet. But wait, what we're gonna do is put this right side up. We are gonna take a ruler. It's kind of a long ruler for me to be using but we are going to trim. So I'm going to make sure this is lined up perfectly. There we go, along the side and we are going to trim. There you go, pull all your trash away. Now we'll rotate, we'll do a trim right here. There we go. We will turn one more time this way. And sorry, you guys, when I'm filming, it never fails that we get a freight delivery. I can hear the freight pulling up outside. And we trim right here. And remember, this is one and a half by six and a half, so you can be using the lines on your ruler as well to help guide. And then we'll do this one line right here. And Magic, y'all, when we flip this over. Look at our perfect flying geese. I love it, right? So then when you are doing this, this little line right here represents your quarter inch seam line. And you'll use your instructions to finish assembling this. 
to make your super cute pin cushion. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're always happy to help. And thanks for being a member of the Loads of Fun Block of the Month. Happy stitching!